Hi, my lovely peoples. Now we're going to talk about stoichiometry in terms of limiting reactants. Now, what is a limiting reactant? Well, let's use this example here. You go to a kitchen, you work for, let's say, a sandwich shop. And the sandwich shop just so happens to have a dozen eggs and 20 pieces of bread. And your job on the first day of work was to make the classic egg sandwich. And the ratio of raw materials needed to make the classic egg sandwich would be two pieces of bread, two slices of bread, and <clears throat> an egg. Okay? So, by taking this, and you make the egg sandwich, how many egg sandwiches would you make? Ten, right? Ten. Now, when you made the egg sandwich, ten pieces of egg sandwich, how many eggs did you use? Ten. How many slices of bread did you use? Twenty, right? How many eggs did you have left? Two? That's right. What about slices of bread? How many slices of bread did you have left? Zero. Now, because you have zero pieces of bread left, and you still have an amount of eggs left, the slices of bread could be considered as a limiting reactant, while the bread, I mean, the bread is considered as the limiting reactant and the eggs are the excess reactant. And <clears throat> this is exactly the concept of limiting reactants. So in chemistry, how do we apply this concept in the form of stoichiometric calculations? So let's look at a classic example. All right, so I have 200 cubic centimeters of hydrochloric acid with a concentration of 0.5 molars, okay? And it was used to react with 200 grams of solid sodium hydroxide pellets, all right? Determine the limiting reactant. Well, first thing we have to do is to find, uh, is to write the balance equation, okay? So HCl, which is aqueous, plus NaOH, which is a solid, giving me sodium chloride solution and water as the liquid. All right, that's my balance equation. Very easy. Now, second step is to determine the moles of hydrochloric acid and the moles for sodium chloride and sodium hydroxide. So here we go. <clears throat> for hydrochloric acid, I would say that the amount of moles, I'm going to convert this cubic centimeters to decimeters. So there we go. So it will be 0.200 cubic decimeters multiplied by 0.5 moles per volume. And that should give me to about 0.1 moles of HCl. So this is the amount of moles of HCl I have. What about the moles of sodium hydroxide? Okay, so sodium hydroxide, I'll get 200 grams, and then I would divide it by the molar mass. Mm, what's the molar mass of sodium hydroxide? So, I, I should know this, I mean, oh well, 16 plus 23 is 40, isn't it? Yep, 40. So, divided by 40 grams per mole, and that should give me 50, right? Five, sorry, I forgot the zero about that. So, five moles of sodium hydroxide. Okay, so look, comparing the two moles values for hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide, I can say that um, the hydrochloric acid will be, <coughs> excuse me, 
excuse me, the hydrochloric acid will be the limiting reactant. Okay, what if I change this question up a little bit? Let us change this, this question, okay? Um, let's change it to, huh, instead of hydrochloric acid, no, no, let's change this up. So I'm sorry, I'm Ah, bless me. I will say calcium hydroxide, okay? Instead of 200, let's reduce it down to 50 and increase the moles to perhaps uh, 2 moles, okay? 2 molars. Now, let's try to determine which is the limiting reactant again. Okay, so the first thing I'll do is to rewrite this, okay, 0.2 multiplied by 2, that should give me 0.4, okay, 0.4 moles of HCl. Now, calcium hydroxide, on the other hand, uh, how many moles of calcium hydroxide did I use, okay, I'm making up data as I go along, so let's hope it pans out very well. So, 50 grams divided by the molar mass of calcium hydroxide, 17 plus 40 is 74 grams per mole. Oh, my sniffles is coming in. Divided by 74, that should give me about 0.6. Seven, okay, so eight moles of calcium hydroxide. Okay, <clears throat> whoa. So, is this, can you take this information and determine the limiting reactant? Well, let's take a look at the balance equation. Now, the balance equation will now be using so calcium hydroxide, okay? And because it's calcium hydroxide, we have changed the equation. The, so the molar ratio between hydrochloric acid and calcium hydroxide is a 2 to 1 ratio. Okay? And what we need to do, because it's a 2 to 1 ratio, is we need to divide both of these values by the coefficients of these reactants. So I need to take 0.4 divided by 2, and I take 0.68 divided by 1. And uh, what well I have determined that this is 0.2 and this is 0.68. And so this is the limiting reactant. The hydrochloric acid is the limiting reactant because it's the smaller of the two values. Yeah, but what if I change the numbers to a much larger number? So let's say I changed it to 10. I will change that to 10, okay, and now my moles here would be uh, 2 moles, right? And I will change this moles, 2 moles divided by 2 is 1 mole. And now which of these two will be the limiting reactant? Well, it turns out that this calcium hydroxide will be the limiting reactant. And if your exams ask to further extend this concept to perhaps determine the volume of water, I mean to determine the mass of calcium chloride produced, okay, you could which information would you take? Would you take the information uh, from here? Would you take the information from here? Would you take the information from here? Or would you take the information from here? Well, first of all, you only want to take the information from the limiting reactant, which means that it is the limiting reactant will, that determines the maximum amount of products that is made. So, I could say 
that I will not use the information calculated by the hydrochloric acid. I would either use this information or this information. They, this two happens to be the same. All right? So I would just take this information, 0.68 moles, and compare it to the molar ratio of calcium hydroxide to calcium chloride, which is a one-to-one. -one. So I should have made also 0.68 moles of calcium chloride. And I will multiply that by the relative mass, right, the MR, to get my mass, all right? But what if the, this <coughs> two pieces of information, because let's say if I had another example, okay, uh, whereby this is H2SO4, and this is NaOH, the relationship between sulfuric acid to sodium hydroxide will be a 1 to 2. And because this is a 1 to 2, I should take this information here and divide it by the 2 because that is the coefficient for the sodium hydroxide. Okay? And what will happen now is that I will get 3, 4 moles of sodium hydroxide. And I will say that this will be my limiting reactant, okay? So, my question now is, when we calculate this, which set of information will we use to determine the mass of the product, okay? Which one? Well, we would use, well, we would use this information because that is the information given originally by the question, okay? Yes, this video has been really long and I thank you for being patient with me. Uh, if you've got any questions, just ask them in the comments below.